It says, hi, time for another midweek chat, everybody. How's it going? So another exotic uh, uh, location, right? We're in the Holy City this week. We're in Jerusalem. So, and we're here on a Saturday morning. I'm right here on a Saturday morning. So I should say to you, Shabbat Shalom, uh, shal a Sabbath peace to you. So last night at sunset, um, Jewish people started observing the Sabbath. And uh, I took a little group just uh, who were up for a fast walk to the Western Wall. And it's really something to see. So you might see some people. This, here, this is Damascus Gate. It's in East Jerusalem. It's an Arab neighborhood. But because it's Sabbath, a lot of Jewish people are coming to, to pray at the Western Wall. So you might see uh, some interesting um, diversity here. So, um, boy, yeah, I've, I've seen a picture of the Western Wall. But it's like a you know, this large white thing. It was the retaining wall of the temple in Jesus' time, some of the lower bricks. And uh, we're going to go there as a group, I think, tomorrow. Have the opportunity to put a prayer in there. Um, that's it's kind of for some pilgrim groups that's a major destination it's really it's famous so we like to see it but the major destination for us uh christians or catholic christians anyway or mainline christians are uh, is the church of the holy sepulcher sepulcher means tomb and uh, that's where we were this morning so we woke up at quarter to four because the the way you, you do it is you um you can do it different ways but the way that i like to do it that our tour company sets up for us is to have uh, to walk the, the Via Dolorosa before uh, Mass at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And so to do that um, early when there's no, because right now, even right now, it's still kind of early, plus it's Sabbath, so it's maybe not as active as it might be on other days. But um, certainly the Christian quarter and the Muslim quarter will be as active as in other days. The, the, what was I saying? I'm a little punchy. Last time I had jet lag when I had the chat, so I looked funny. This time I was, I've been up since 3.30. I didn't sleep much last night because I had to plan for today. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Um, I can't remember what I was talking about. Sabbath? So we went, we went to the Western Wall. There were just a lot of people in their outfits we saw. It's a joyful, it's a joyful thing um, for a lot of the observant Jews to have Sabbath. It's just like a day of no worries. Remember the goodness of God's creation. Seventh day he rested. We're going to rest. We're going to pray. We're going to be with our families. There's a lot of singing and chanting and circle dances uh, in the plaza last night. And we were welcome to observe. I don't think we would have been... Um, we, you know, as long as the men were... They have these... Uh, not disposable, but you just use them and then put them in a used box. Uh, kippes, or I guess yarmulkes, is typically what we call them in the U.S. But... Um, so men need to cover their heads if they go near the western wall. And women, I don't think have those kind of restrictions. There's a barrier between them. There's been a movement for a long time to have a place where women and men could pray together, you know. And uh, doesn't seem like maybe I, I'm always talking half, half, half knowledge. I read in the Israeli newspaper this week though that members of the new, uh, some new members of the Knesset that are more like religiously conservative, they want to make it not just not allow it, but they want to make it a crime to have uh, men and women pray together at the Western Wall. So I hear a little bit of a call to prayer from a Muslim mosque. It's just, it's so uh, rich in diversity, which can be great if everybody respects each other and wants to live in peace together. And it's, it's, it's not so great if everybody thinks they're right and, and uh, the other person doesn't have a right to be where you are, and that kind of stuff, which is happens a lot here too, you know. But not with the majority of people. We've heard a lot of great speakers. Um, we've been mostly in the West Banks until now. Um, uh, so Palestinian Christians, we've heard to hear their stories. And how, uh, we met a student from Bethlehem University, the only Catholic university in, in the West Bank or in the occupied territories, Palestinian territories. And uh, he's like 20, 21 years old, English literature major, and wants to be a translator someday. And he said, uh, Israel's five miles away from here. Six. I've, I've never been there. He's not, he's not allowed to go to this beautiful city. Um, depends, depends where you live, where you're born, if you have the right papers, you know. But anyway, and tonight we're going to have a, a, a Jewish speaker tonight. So someone I also met in my sabbatical, Marcy. She's actually a New Testament scholar, though she's Jewish. And, uh, she agreed to come. We got a room reserved for her tonight. The only, my only concern is that I think my pilgrims are going to be 
tired. So that we are gonna go on a little sleep. I hope they all get a big super nap. Right now, I ran back here after our morning visit and uh, <laughs> I hope they're napping to catch up on their sleep. Um, Cause we have some more touring to do today and then uh, dinner and then she's gonna come and talk at 7.30. So I'm just afraid people might not show up. She's gonna be an excellent speaker. So I want people to hear her. And tomorrow a Palestinian Christian friend of mine uh, will again speak to us. So we've had a lot of nice kind of uh, optional kind of talks and things. Um, to hear. I really liked what um, my friend Frederick said. He's a pastor in Bethlehem now. And I asked him, what's the spirituality like of Bethlehem, Christian spirituality, where you live? And he said, um, he said, you know, we're in Bethlehem. And so we think a lot about the child Jesus, the baby Jesus. And there's a certain, the two words he used were fragility and vulnerability. Um, so just as a baby is fragile and children are vulnerable to being hurt, you know, um, that's kind of the existence that we have here because Bethlehem's in the occupied territory. Some people can't, not a lot of freedom of movement, a lot of uh, threats of, of violence. And, uh, uh, you know, not a, not a pleasant place to live. So there's certain fragileness to that all. And he goes, uh, sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're concerned about strength, um, then when you're put down by someone who has guns, then you feel hum you feel humiliated and you want revenge. He said, but if, if you're in touch with the charism of being vulnerable and fragile like the child Jesus, you're not seeking power. Uh, you can try to be a peacemaker in the midst of all. You know, you don't take... Uh, y your dignity is so... Uh, grounded in God who loves you as you are, you know. So if somebody puts you down, you know, you don't, your instant reaction isn't hate and revenge. Um, so he thought, he thought Christian spirituality, he said the key is the Beatitudes. We just bent to the Mount of Beatitudes and prayed with those, so the key is the Beatitudes, be poor in spirit, to be meek, um, to never lose uh, love from our hearts, to love your enemies. And you know that's tricky. I think I think that's going to be our gospel reading next weekend when I'm back. Um, a lot of people really bridle when you say because you know if someone's suffering injustice, you don't want to tell them, "Well, just just take it and, and, and love them." You know, people should be able to definitely work for justice, stick up for their rights, and uh, and yet not to be consumed with hate. I guess in the midst of it. You know, I heard a comment last night. She said, what I really liked about our speakers is that even as they tell their hard stories, they're not, you can, they don't, they don't have a lot of hate. You, you know, they're not like screaming. They're not, you know. So it, it's a hard thing. So I'll be curious tonight. I've asked, I asked Marcy, who's our Jewish guest tonight. I said, you know, they've been hearing a lot of from the Palestinian side. You know, if you got anything to share about the situation, the political situation here from an Israeli point of view, that'd be fine. But I think mainly what I want to hear from her is, you know, what's it like to be Jewish in Israel? You know, and huge variety, you know, you know, very kind of, I guess, dovish and hawkish, just like, you know, in our society. Um, so I really would want to coexist peacefully with uh, people that are different, Palestinians, others, you know, not so much. And, uh, yeah, so we'll hear a little bit of that tonight. Um, where was it? I wanted to, you know, I was going to tell a little about Mass today. So I'm talking about our, our trip, but so we, this morning we woke up early so we could be unfettered doing the Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross. We wouldn't hear a lot of street noise and vendors trying to sell us stuff as we were praying. So we had pretty much had the place to ourselves. Interestingly, as we were about to begin the, the Stations of the Cross, there was the uh, Muslim call to prayer. So the law, the law it's over the loudspeakers. If I tried to imitate it, I would sound like I was mocking it, so I don't want to do that. But it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's in Arabic, it's high pitched, and it's sustained. It lasts 10 minutes. So it's hard, it's hard to start our prayer in the midst of that. But you find that all the time. When I was here three years ago, I'd say Mass, celebrate Mass uh, with the Christian brothers because they needed priests because they're brothers. And almost always during Mass, you'd hear the Muslim call to prayer. And I just thought, well, you know, what a lovely place to be, to be, you know. I, celebrating mass through presence of christ uh, forgiveness redemption crucified and risen shared as bread you know for us and 
and uh, to feed our and at the same time there's other people being called to prayer and, and spreading their blankets and bowing and, and asking God to uh, bless them as well and just the diversity is incredible um, so we did that what did we do what did I just say I need more sleep so um, yeah, the Via Dolorosa. Yeah, so we walked the way across. And we had some glitches. I didn't realize Station 1 and Station 2 were like at the same place. So we, I said Station 2, but it said Station 3 on the, on the wall. And so, you know, stuff like that. And then we thought we could uh, do this passage. The guide was with us. It wasn't just me. And uh, this door was locked that we thought we could get through. So we had to backtrack. And it was dark, you know. I think my, my favorite part, I hope I didn't feel people put on the spot, but our guide is fast walker. We changed guides. It's our second day with a new guide. And he walks fast. This is his hometown. He grew up in the old city behind these walls. And uh, so when he moves, he moves fast. Um, and, oh, everybody in our group doesn't move fast. And that's uh, that's okay. But all, all 46 of us got up and we're on the bus by 4.30 today and we all made it. But I noticed that after a few times that um, the group, the faster walkers would be at station three and then the slower walkers would be at station three, three minutes later or two minutes later. So, so at one point I said, hey, we're doing this together, right? You know, the pilgrimage, whole pilgrimage, we're doing together and certainly the station of the cross. So let's have, let's say the last shall be first and uh, not to put, we don't want to make people like that we're just pulling, dragging them along. So you set the pace, you know, you'd be first. We want to arrive together. and. Uh, so I'm glad I thought of that. I don't always think that. I'm often pretty and considerate. But uh, I think that was a good move. I think that was a good move. And we got to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and it was a little bit different of a setup. Usually it's our group, and we're in a chapel there. And uh, this time, I think they thought they were doing us a great favor. Though The people liked it, so I think it probably was a great favor. I, um, we celebrated the solemn mass of the day with the Franciscans, and there were priests from Slovakia, Lily, priests from Slovakia, priests from Poland, and priests from Czechoslovakia, and then Father Dine and myself, because uh, my company had reserved it, we were the main celebrant. So I sat next to the Franciscan. It was all in Latin, was the problem for me, because I uh, don't really know it. And uh, there's the tomb of Christ behind us, you know, and then um, I proclaimed, Jackie Miller proclaimed the first reading. Then everything, the songs were all in Latin, all the mass parts were in Latin. Then I proclaimed the gospel in English and I preached. And I asked, I said, do I preach? And he said, I said, what, what? Two minutes, no more. <laughs> I was like, okay, he's actually a friendly guy. So it is possible, believe it or not, I can preach a homily in two minutes. I sat down and he said, perfecto. I go, oh, grazie. So anyway, that was, that was nice. I'm glad I uh, honored the space by a two minute homily. So, that's good. I said we need each other for our faith. Like Peter and John raced to the tomb. That was the gospel that we had today. And uh, Peter entered, and it said John entered and believed. So Peter entered, didn't say he believed, but John entered and he believed. And I thought it's just a way for for us, you know. I mean, we might have our individual experiences of revelation or a mountaintop spiritual experiences that help our faith along. I hope you do. Everybody doesn't. I always think of Sister Pauline, faithful nun for so many years, one of the St. Pete's nuns. She said, I've never had any experience like that. I said, that's great. Your faith is like three times stronger than mine then because you believe even without those spirits. Anyway, I think most of us, myself included, we need each other. You know, just like Peter needed John's belief to come to his own belief. And I, I remembered my um, my mother came, came with us on my first pilgrimage and we were small enough where we all fit. There's the inner tomb where that priest and I and Father Dine, just room for three priests really, went to celebrate the Eucharist on a platform right over the tomb. Then the other priests were outside and the people were outside. But there's like an antechamber that can hold about 25 people packed. And uh, my mom was among them. And we went in for mass, the Eucharistic prayer all in the tomb so they could just see our legs, you know, and uh, our vestments, you know. And, uh, and I, I, was, I think I was so worried about doing things right. I, I maybe wasn't as focused on what the Eucharist is and what was going on rel religiously because it was a new environment for me. But I remember I came out with communion to give everybody communion. And all, I would say all 23, 24 of those pilgrims, their faces were shining in the light uh, of the of etiquette. They're all, they're all crying, you know? And I thought, wow, 
chains of death have been broken, their faith is strong, they're meeting the risen Christ, uh, offered to them in the Eucharist, and, uh, you know, then I started crying. And I need their faith, you know, we need each other's faith. So, pretty impressive thing. And I didn't actually go in and touch the Calvary Rock today because I was kind of organizing, trying to keep people in, in order, you know, or the, or the, I celebrate Mass in the tomb, so I feel, didn't feel I had to go in there myself. Um, but great, great experiences to be able to touch those places. I think some people felt a little rushed along. And that's part of a pilgrimage in these. Most places you can linger a little bit, but if you're at the Tomb of Christ, Calvary where Christ was crucified, which are in the same church, kind of right? I could walk there. It'd take me a while. I almost tried to do this from there, but nah, I didn't know if I'd have a good spot. Plus, it's, I don't know if I have to get back to the bus. So, um, they were in the same church, Calvary, and you, and you, and you, you there's a hole uh, under an altar there. You go up these steps, there's a little plaza with two altars, Catholic and Greek Orthodox. God forbid we share an altar. You know, I, no, anyway, that's a whole other topic. But, um, and you, you can stick your hand through a hole in the floor under the altar and touch Calvary Rock. I remember the first time I did that, it's just like an electric shock went through my body, you know. Father Bryce, a good friend of mine, he said the first time he did that, he was so in touch with the sacrifice of Christ, giving all he had on the cross. He said, uh, his, he just spoke to a spontaneous prayer popped out of his lips, ask me anything and I'll do it. Ask me anything. He was just so in touch with Jesus' sacrifice for, you know, all he endured. And he said to God, ask me anything and I'll do it for you. But I thought that was profound, you know. And then being in the tomb, you know, there's about three, four people out in the tomb at one time. You touch the tomb, maybe put your head to the tomb. What do you say? The, the divine energy, the divine life, that is stronger than death, you know. Fill me, be part of me, fill us, fill your world. Help me believe. Uh, huh? Resurrection faith. So that's a great day. And uh, so we had, that was just this morning. So now we're going to go to uh, some other place in the old city. And we're going to go to uh, Emmaus. There's a debate about which Emmaus which is the real Emmaus. Uh, we'll go there and we'll tell the story, breaking the bread. I'm going to try to think about group discussion because we already had Mass. We won't celebrate Mass there. Um, but it's a good group. We have a good group. We're really helping each other. A few people have taken with a kind of a hard thing, but they've tested negative the COVID, and, and, uh, but they occasionally will miss a day of touring, which is too bad. But it's kind of it seems to be the kind of thing that they rest up for a day and then they're ready to roll again. So... So far, so good. Pray for us. We continue to pray for you. Um, hope you're enjoying Father Parr. And I did not get to see the YouTube uh, Mass last week. I want to. But I see it was a minute four, so he couldn't have preached that short. So it's good. You don't want to get used to a short preacher. I can try out my two-minute homilies on you guys when I get back. Daily Mass. Um, what else? I don't know if it's been interesting behind me. I've been kind of... Yeah, just, it's usually a little busier here. In the evening, it'll be real busy, but this is the time I had to do it. Um, anything else I could say? I don't know. We got, I'm posting on the St. James uh, Facebook page some pictures each day. They're not the best pictures of the pilgrimage because I'm often hosting and doing things, but I try to collect pictures from other people and put up about 10 to 15 pictures a day. So. Um, all right. The Stations of the Cross that we walked today... The Via Dolorosa, the Way of Sorrows. Uh, it touches hearts and it, uh, you know, we all have Stations of the Cross in the Catholic world in our churches. And uh, these came first. And it was a big deal. A lot of early Christians are all European, you know. They try to make their way to the, the Holy Land to walk the Via Dolorosa. It's kind of like Muslims go to Mecca once a, once a lifetime. Um, the idea was to walk the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem part of being Christian and well that's just kind of impractical it's expensive now and uh, so they were even figuring out that it was hard for everyone to do that back in the day and so I think around the middle ages I feel like it was like 11th century or so I never know for sure I just spit out stuff but our guides do the same thing they don't know some of the things they tell us I'm like hey, really I don't know but they say it with confidence so that's that's a that's a key someone asked me something today it's funny when you're a host they just kind of expect you to know I thought, what was it I don't know, they just asked me, all these, how deep is the Dead Sea? I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, um, so I think I'll leave it at that. I gotta hoof back to the hotel. It's about a, a 15 minute walk if I go fast. Um, here comes, uh, here comes to uh, a guy. Let's see if you can see him. Or where is he walking, where is he walking? Is it just 
not a view. Yeah, okay, there you go. See, he's got his prayer shawl. He's heading over to the Western Wall to pray on Sabbath for Sabbath prayers. So, anyway, Shabbat Shalom to you, Sabbath peace. I'll let you take in the scene for a little bit, and uh, maybe next time from Jordan, we'll see if there's a spot to, to have a, a chat, okay? Uh, God bless you all. Keep the faith. Amen.